Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. And praise be to the Most High God, who has given us another day in which we can rejoice in his presence and consider his holy word. For those of us who speak English, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. So I have a message for you today, my sisters, that it's very important for Christian women to learn about and understand. And I, as an aged woman in the body of Christ, am here to teach those of you who are younger, and young in faith or young in years, it doesn't matter, about the godly principle of homemaking. So in the scripture, this is referred to particularly as ordering the house or keeping at home. And I'm not going to read those scriptures particularly for you because anyone who's a Christian understands, of course, that a woman was created to be a suitable servant for her husband. And she delights to do the things that God created her to do. And we who love the Lord understand that our service is very important because without the role of the woman, there's a lot of chaos and confusion in the world. And we can see that all around us where women have given up their natural use to seek after the things that pertain to men. And the whole world is pretty much uh, going to hell in a handbasket, as it were, because there's so much chaos. And people don't know what to do or how to do it. And there's something that causes suffering in the world when a woman doesn't do the things that God has called her to do and seeks to do something else. So the role of the woman is kind of um, the glue, as it were, that holds a society together, a culture together. And it's very important. It's not the same thing as what men do, but it's just as important, just different. So I realize that some of these ideas are foreign to people in the world, but those of us who love Jesus Christ and love his word, understand that the way God made the world is very beautiful. And when we conform ourselves to the things and the ways of God, then we are blessed indeed. So a woman was created to be a suitable servant to her husband, but if she's not yet married, she would cultivate in herself the heart attitudes and the skills so that later, when she is a married woman, she's able to competently address the needs of her family. A woman who's living in her earthly father's house who would seek to serve in her earthly father's house, and that's a great way to learn the skills that later can be applied in her husband's house. Those of us who live alone still want to understand that as servants and handmaidens of the Lord, handmaidens, women serve differently than men, that we would create in our home a safe place, whether it be for visiting family members who have grown up or whether it be for uh, the brethren to gather in, in fellowship or whether it simply be a place of sanctuary and prayer for ourselves while we serve the Lord in prayer. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 21 that God said that his house should be a house of prayer. And so God's people understand that we are living stones making up the church of Jesus Christ. And the purpose of the church of Jesus Christ is to be a house of prayer. A house of prayer is not a building. A house of prayer is made up of God's people. But those of us who are Christians also, our vessel is there to bring forth prayer unto God so that God's spirit can move in those that we serve. So as a godly Christian woman, we understand one of the most important things we do in service to those that we love is to pray for them. And when we are taking care of our house and guiding our house, that is one of the primary objectives that we would be looking to perform. So a home should be a sanctuary, a house of prayer, a place of peace and rest, a place where God's word can be considered. 
It would also be a place of joy where there are warm events and, and warm meals and conversations that are edifying and also a place where people can find solitude if they need it, where they can find quietness and peace. So creating an atmosphere in our physical home is one of the most beautiful things that God has ordained the woman to do. And I want to read of this particularly in Psalm 84, starting in verse 1. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. We who are Christian women understand that our role is very important. When we create a safe and warm environment for our family, that that is something that causes the word of God to flourish. And it causes people to be able to seek the things of God when they're crying out for the living God, which is in the soul of man to do. It is put in us by God to seek the things that are higher than ourselves. A woman understands that when she serves in her house to make it a peaceful sanctuary, where the word of God is exalted, that that is a very valuable thing indeed. So the swallow hath found a nest for herself. And, you know, nest making is something that sometimes in the world is talked about, where a woman is about to have a baby and creates a safe place in the home for that baby. And that is the natural inclination of the woman to, first of all, to love her husband and to bear children to him but also to create a nest wherein the children can be nourished and brought up in the ways of holiness. This is the natural use of the woman, and it is something that we who love the Lord enjoy very much. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some principles of how to do this, my sisters. One thing we can see about a home is that it has walls and windows and doors. Walls and windows and doors. And those things are there so that what is inside can be safe and protected from the things that are outside, like weather and like intrusive ideas and people. So the things that we allow in through our door are important for us to take heed as to the wisdom of whether or not something should come in. So things like a television or technology or um, people who are disruptive and ungodly or things that distract from the simplicity that we have in Christ. So Christians live a simple life. We don't run around with all kinds of chaos and confusion do, doing too many things because too many activities are overwhelming. We focus on what is necessary and good and keep things simple. So, of course, the most obvious distraction that exists in the world today is the phone or the Internet. So choosing wisely how to order how much that is used in our home is very important. We would also understand that technology is a useful tool, but it's not an appropriate tool for everything. And when we are seeking to know the will of God, the place we look 
is in the word of God and we seek God on our knees in prayer and wait for him to answer us. So, of course, Google pr provides a lot of easy answers, and sometimes that's very helpful. If you want to know directions about how to get to a certain place, well, that's very useful. If you want to know perhaps the, the, the way to cook a certain kind of food, well, that can be very fast and easy. But we want to remember that just because that's a useful tool, it is not something that is useful in every situation. So our children need our guidance and our love and our care, and they don't need to be given a mental pacifier, which is technology, to keep them quiet so we can attend to the things of the house. Rather, we would include our children in what we're doing so that they can learn things. So for example, if we're trying to teach a young child how to count, what better way to do that than, than to have them assist us in assembling a recipe where it says we need this amount of these things in it to make it good. It's an obvious way in which to teach a child about how to count, or the differences in colors, or what the names of things are, or how to be useful themselves in the family, because we know that self-respect comes from having value contributing Self-esteem is the estimation that we have or the image we have in our mind that we want people to think about us. But self-respect is the truth of how useful and helpful we are to the community community, pardon me, in which we reside. And the first community in which children learn to be socialized is the family. So it should be about teaching our children how to be useful and to contribute so they can develop self-respect. In this way, the home is a place of sanctuary, yes, but the woman is responsible to order it in such a way that everybody has a part to play in that, that she is not running after her children with a mop, as it were. A wife is not her children's maid. A wife is her husband's servant, and part of the way she serves is to teach the children how to be useful members of the family. And then this translates later into being useful members of the community. And that's why the role of the woman, or part of the reason why it's so important. Hallelujah. So a home in a Christian's life should be a place of sanctuary, a house of prayer, there should be joy therein and the praises of God, and there should be happy and edifying conversation. There should be the opportunity for solitude and quietness as well. It should be a place where someone can find sleep if they need sleep and food if they need food. It should be warm and inviting and not rigid and barren and controlling. When we find a place of rest, my sisters, in God, then we can translate that into the world by the atmosphere that we create in our homes. We are careful about what we let in, and we are also careful about what people see when they're looking out. So we open our windows, what do we see? Do we see the weather? Do we see people walking by? Yes, and there are times when those windows should be open to let in fresh air, and sometimes when those windows need to be closed to keep out the cold or the heat. There are times when the windows, the shades should be up so we can see out, and there are times when the shades should be brought down so other people cannot see in. You see, a home to be safe has to be private sometimes. And not everything that is outside needs to be coming in all the time. So if you have Windows or some other operating system on your computer, be careful about what you're looking out upon and draw down the shades sometime. And also realize that not everything you think, not everything that you have happening in your family needs to be posted on social media. So the window is there for a reason so we can see what's going on outside, so we can let in the light. 
but the window is also there to keep out the rain and the cold and the wind. And some things don't benefit us to look at. And some things we don't want looking at in us. We want to protect our children from dangers on the internet. People who would lure them away from the truth of God's word. So again, a safe home has a door in which the door can be closed sometimes. Not everything gets to come in. And part of creating an orderly home is making decisions about when that door is closed, when the shades are down, and when the door is open. And if there's too much coming in through the windows and the doors, then there's cold and chaos and danger. So as godly women, we would order our home carefully, making decisions daily about how much is too much and when and where is it appropriate for us to open things up. Hallelujah. Another aspect of a Christian home, of course, is walls. We understand that God has appointed in his temple salvation for walls. Salvation is the wall that should be around our family. The salvation we have found in Jesus Christ by baptism in his name and being filled with his spirit, we remember that we are saved to serve the Lord. We are saved to thereafter live in holiness. And that is the boundary that should always exist around our home and our family, that we remember that not everything is worthy of our consideration. Not everything needs to be paid attention to. Drastic news, scary weather reports, conspiracy theories. Without walls, there is no safety. And so when we are creating a safe place, a safe haven for our family members, we understand that some things need to stay out completely, and that's what the walls are for. If something hinders someone's faith in God, if something causes confusion, then that's what the walls are for, to keep those people and things out. The door is so that people can come and go, because, of course, a place of sanctuary is so that people can find strength to then go forth and do the things that are necessary in the world. So sometimes the door is open and sometimes the door is closed so that we can go out, but also so not everything gets to come in. And we get to decide the timing of that as godly women. Not, of course, to rule and reign over our husband, but to order the home properly so it's a safe place for our children and a sanctuary for us indeed. Now, for example, I, I just want to give you an example. There are often many women who want to come over to our house and they want to chatter and they want to gossip about their husband and complain about their children and, and spend their time in idleness and speaking foolish words. That is something we would close our door. We would say, no, thank you. We have things to do today, ma'am. <laughs> and that is just being wise and it's being kind. Also, our children's friends. Are our children's friends going to bring in things to our home that are going to corrupt our children's minds? Or are they going to come into our home and learn the ways of righteousness and desire to do the things as we are doing them? So the door is there to be open sometimes, closed at other times. And of course, the well-being of the family members is the reason why we have things like walls and doors. The windows are there to let in light, to, to let us see out and see what's going on. But they're also sometimes to be closed for privacy, for the sake of our home being a safe place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our home would be a place where things are orderly, but not rigidly controlled. Where people know where things go. So, you know, the socks go in the sock drawer and the dishes go in the pantry and the food goes in the refrigerator. Perhaps everything has a place and people know what to do and people know how to contribute. 
but it's there for the people and the family primarily. It's not there to be an entertainment center or a place where there's wildness and craziness and parties and, and chaos. Because as godly women, we understand that if there is no peace in the home, where is there safety? Where is there rest? For our children to learn the ways of righteousness, we must create a home wherein there's peace and rest. We're careful about what comes in and what goes out and when things go out. We also are careful about what we look upon and what we allow our children to look upon and what other people see in our family as well. Not everybody's eyes are welcome in our home. And the things that we say and do in our home are for the glory of God. It should be a house of prayer where the word of God is exalted and, and honored and, and considered daily, where people find peace but also usefulness, where they find self-respect and joy in serving one another, where there is love. You see, love is something that flourishes in safety. Love is something that is cultivated in safety. And when we love our family, we understand that how we keep our home is really, really important. So it's not just about vacuuming the floor. It's not just about having food in the house. It's not about educating our children as to what the government might require our children to learn. It's about creating a sanctuary, a place of peace and rest, where there is laughter and there is quietness and there is music and there is the word of God and there is prayer. There is mutual respect in the family. We all have a place and a way to serve. So the child who's two years old serves differently than the child who is 14 or 17. And the way a woman serves is to see to it that her home is peaceful and safe and a place of rest and sanctuary so that God can be glorified. I pray this message has been a blessing to you. Feel free to write to me if you like. My email is always in the description box underneath the video. And may the word of God go forth today and uplift and bless and edify many. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.